It's a strange sensation, isn't it? This feeling that the future we were anticipating in AI, well, it feels like it's not just coming, but maybe it's already kind of here in ways we weren't quite expecting. Exactly. You hear about these big AI milestones, things predicted years out, but suddenly the ground feels like it's shifting much faster. Right? And that's really the core of what we want to dig into today. This idea that artificial general intelligence, AGI, maybe isn't this distant dot on the horizon anymore. Yeah, the possibility that we might actually be seeing the early stages of it now, much sooner than, well, than most of the big predictions suggested. Especially that famous one, Ray Kurtzville's 2029 benchmark. For years, that date has been you know, the date in AI discussions. And it wasn't just pulled out of thin air, was it? Yeah, Kurtzville based that on decades of tracking exponential trends in technology. It was a serious analysis, definitely. He outlined specific things he expected to see by then. Things like language models getting truly human fluent, right? Exactly. That plus AI passing the Turing test convincingly. Yeah, and other things like brain-computer interfaces becoming viable, even simulating human cognition at scale. These were concrete technological hurdles he expected us to clear. So a very clear picture of what AGI's arrival might look like based on measurable progress. Precisely. It was a specific waypoint, not just a vague feeling. But here we are. It's 2025. And the conversation feels different. It's less about will we hit those 2029 targets and maybe more about, wow, has the game already changed? Has reality started to outpace the prediction? That's the big question, isn't it? Is the relevance of 2029 shifting from being a precise target date to maybe being a benchmark that progress is actually overtaking? OK, so let's unpack that. What is it about 2025 that feels so different? What are these accelerations we're seeing? It feels like more than just steady improvement. Well, I think one of the key things, maybe the key thing, is the convergence of capabilities. It's not just that, say, language models are better or vision systems are better. It's how they're coming together. Exactly. It's the fusion. We're seeing AI now that can interact in real time using language, vision, and voice all pretty seamlessly. That's a huge leap, an AI that can understand what you say, see what you're pointing at, and talk back with like actual tone and memory of the conversation, right? It's moving way past just performing isolated tasks. And tied into that, we're seeing AI models that can actually self-correct their reasoning while they're working on something. Whoa, okay, so it can realize it's going down the wrong path logically and adjust. Sort of, yeah. It suggests a kind of metacognition, evaluating its own thought process, which is, you know, a pretty sophisticated ability. And then there's this mention of operator tools. What's that about? It sounds like managing multiple AIs. Yeah, think of operator as like a conductor for a group of specialized AI agents, frameworks that can take a complex problem, break it down, assign pieces to different AIs, and then bring the results together. Okay, so coordination, orchestrating intelligence almost. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's a step towards tackling really complex, multifaceted problems, which feels much closer to general intelligence. And there was another term, recursive intelligence evolution. Sounds pretty complex. It is conceptually, but the core idea is AI improving itself. Not just learning from data, but reflecting on its own performance, its own design, and figuring out how to make itself smarter or more efficient. So it identifies flaws or areas for improvement in its own code or structure, and then implements the changes. Basically, yes, it's this loop of reflection and self-modification. If an AI can do that effectively, its progress could become incredibly rapid, maybe even exponential in a way we haven't seen before. It's about self-directed improvement. Okay, that feels like a potential game changer. And this isn't just happening in the big closed off labs anymore. That's another really important point. We're seeing breakthroughs from independent researchers, smaller groups, this open emergence, as some call it. So innovation is more distributed, which could mean it's accelerating faster overall. Yeah, it really makes you question if 
our old, maybe more linear ways of thinking about AI progress are even sufficient anymore for what's happening right now in 2025. Yeah, it really feels like maybe our frame of reference needs an update, which brings us to the definition of AGI itself. Traditionally, it's been talked about like this clear line, right? You cross it and boom, AGI, right? A distinct threshold. Yeah, but the material we looked at suggests maybe that's not the right way to think about it. Maybe AGI isn't a line, but more like a lens that some people are already starting to see the world through. A lens? How so? Well, the source poses this really pointed question, something like, if a system can generalize across modalities, meaning, you know, handle text, images, sound, reflect on its reasoning, hold long-term goals, and adapt it through recursion, how is that not general intelligence? That really makes you pause. If systems are showing those kinds of broad abilities, adaptability, self-reflection, goal orientation, self-improvement, are we just getting hung up on a definition? That's the argument. Maybe the disagreement about whether AGI is here isn't because the tech isn't advanced enough, but because our definitions haven't caught up to what the tech can actually do. So because it might be more of a gradual emergence, not everyone sees it or defines it the same way at the same time. Exactly. It might be less like flipping a switch and more like, well, like dawn breaking slowly. Yeah, not everyone notices it at the exact same moment. Okay, so then where does this leave the 2029 prediction? Does it just become irrelevant? No, I don't think irrelevant. It still holds significance, but maybe its importance now isn't as a precise deadline, but more as that crucial time frame it gave us. It forced the conversation. It gave us a window to prepare, to think about the implications, right? It set the stage. So the question shifts. It's less, will we make it by 2029, and more... What happens if this preparation period we thought we had seems to be ending now before the official start date? That's the exact tension. For people watching closely, that feeling of waiting for some future threshold, it's kind of dissolving. It's being replaced by this sense that, hang on, maybe we're already in it. Maybe this fear of AGI is something we're already operating within. The whole landscape has shifted under our feet, essentially. Fundamentally, yes. Yeah, and our understanding needs to catch up fast. So to wrap up, we've got this fascinating contrast, established timelines like 2029 on one side, and on the other, this incredibly rapid, convergent progress happening now in 2025 that just feels different. It challenges that idea of AGI being a single dramatic event down the road. Yeah, and it forces us to ask if our definitions our very understanding of intelligence itself, artificial or otherwise, are keeping pace, it's a critical question. Are our old frameworks adequate for this new reality? It really does make you think, doesn't it? If this shift towards AGI is more gradual, if it's already underway, if systems can genuinely generalize, reflect, pursue goals, self-improve, what does that mean for us right now? How should we be thinking about interacting with these systems today and tomorrow? What core assumptions do we maybe need to revisit about intelligence, about capabilities, about the future we thought was further off? It's a lot to chew on. And honestly, we'd love to hear what you think. What's your take on this? Is AGI closer than we thought? Or are we just redefining things? Let us know your perspectives.